In this video, we are going to discuss force components, and we're going to define what force components are and how we can represent the components of a particular force. So here on the screen, I've drawn this force F, and this is just some arbitrary force uh, that I've labeled F. And if you look at this closely, you can intuitively kind of tell that this force vector has a certain width. So this is the width of that force and it also has a certain height so this is the height of that force and you know that if i started at the tail of this vector that i would have to go some distance in the horizontal direction and then i would have to go up in the vertical direction to get to the tip of f now if we introduce some sort of a reference frame and you know this is a 2d vector so i'll just introduce a 2d uh, reference frame here and this vertical axis is going to be our y-axis and this horizontal axis is going to be our x-axis. You can sort of see that this force vector f has a component again along the horizontal axis, in this case the x-axis, and it also has a component uh, along the vertical axis. So what I can do is I can draw in those components as well along the horizontal you'll have this a component this way, which I will call fx. This is force vector f of x, just to say that this component of f is along the x-axis. And then you also have this uh, vertical component, which is called fy. And this is nothing more than a vector acting in the y direction. And so when you look at this, you can see that this force vector f and I should probably draw this in red just to be a little bit more consistent, uh, you can see that this force vector F is really equal to the summation of this uh, force vector in the X direction plus the force vector in the Y direction. And so when we're speaking of components of a force, what we're really talking about are the components of the X direction and the Y direction, or if it, this is a 3D force, uh, you know, we could introduce an F of Z. But the important thing to remember here is that this force vector F is comprised of this F of X vector and this F of Y vectors. So to make this a little bit more familiar, in previous examples, we would have resultant vectors, which I usually just call called R, and these resultant vectors would just be uh, you know, the summation of any number of vectors. Let's just say they were vectors A and B. And in those examples, we would have this like resultant vector here. Uh, so this would be your resultant vector. And then A might be making, you know, some, uh, it would be a vector like this, and then you could add, you know, B to it. Um, and this was the B vector, this was the A vector, and the summation of A and B gave us our R vector. So that's exactly what we're doing right here. We have these two vectors, F of X and then F of Y, uh, and if we add those two together, we get this resultant vector, which is F. And so when I say that F of X and F of Y are components of F, it's the same as saying vector R has components A and B. Now, these are along different directions, right? This vector A is not necessarily horizontal. It's kind of uh, over to the right and up a little bit, and this B vector has a different direction. But nonetheless, they are still components of this R vector. So I keep saying components, right? What, what, what are components? Well, components, by definition, they are the projection of a force along a specified axis or direction. So if we look back at this force vector F, you can see that if we projected force vector F along the x-axis, we would get this F of x vector. And if we did the same thing along the y-axis, we would get this f of y vector. So f of y and f of x are, again, just projections of this force vector along a specific axis, either in the horizontal or in the vertical. Another way to think about it is that f of x and f of y are the amounts of force F along a specific direction. Okay, so that's great. Now in this diagram right here, uh, F I just kind of drew arbitrarily and I kind of drew in this reference frame. So uh, let's get a little bit more specific to try to understand force components. So if I redrew this reference frame down here and I said this was the uh, Y axis and then this right here was the X axis, 
what I could do is I could take that same uh, vector force F and I can start it at the origin and I'll say that this is F and you'll notice that F is making some angle with the X axis which I'll just call theta. Now just as above we can say that F is equal to F of X plus F of Y, right? These two force vectors right here and here, if we add those two together, we get this force vector F that's acting at a certain angle from this horizontal axis. So these are the components of F. Now, there's a little bit of a problem. These components right here, f of x and f of y, they don't explicitly tell us anything about the direction of these components. Now, I did put x and y here as subscripts for these variables just to make it a little bit easier to understand that f of x is acting you know, along the x-axis and f of y is, is acting along the y-axis. But we very well could have had a situation like this where we just have this vector called A and a vector called B. And if we look at these components, they don't really tell us anything about the direction of those components. So when we're dealing with vectors, how do we specify the direction explicitly? Well, we use something called unit vectors. Now, what are unit vectors? Well, unit vectors, uh, they are no different from any other vector that we've been looking at, but they have one small exception. The magnitudes of unit vectors are one. That's why we call them unit vectors, because they are the very fundamental unit of what a vector is. So let me draw a reference diagram to help us understand that. So let's say, again, I had this y-axis acting up, and I had this x-axis acting to the right, what I can say is that we can define the unit vector along the x-axis as having a magnitude of 1 as a unit vector i, and we can have a unit vector along the y-axis that also has a magnitude of 1, and I'll just call that j. Now, I've called these unit vectors i and j, and I've drawn this little hat over them, and there's nothing special about this hat. This hat and these arrows that we've drawn over other uh, vectors, they're the same exact thing. It's just, it's a little easier to just draw a hat over these unit vectors than it is an arrow. So this unit vector i is used to specify the horizontal direction. And the unit vector j is used to specify the vertical direction, in this case, y. Now, if we were talking about a three-dimensional reference frame or a coordinate system, then we could also introduce another unit vector called k, with a little hat over it. And this is just a unit vector that's acting, well, in and out of the screen if you're watching this video. And again, there's nothing really too special about these unit vectors. They're just called unit vectors because if we took the magnitude of i, we would get 1. And if we took the magnitude of j, we would also get 1. And of course, if we took the magnitude of uh, k in the, you know, in and out of the plane, we would also get a magnitude of 1. So that's what a unit vector is. It's just a regular vector that has a magnitude of 1. There's nothing more special to these unit vectors than that. Now, as another example, to really try to understand that unit vectors are no different than other regular vectors, what I'll do is, here is I'll erase this, and I'll, I'll say that, well, in previous videos, whenever we found a resultant force vector, or even just represented a vector on its own, we would always say that, well, let's say we found the resultant vector r, and it was, let's say, 74 newtons, and it was acting at an angle of 45 uh, degrees uh, from the x-axis. So this is how we specified the force vector r. We, we stated its magnitude, and we also stated its direction. Now, unit vectors, let's take for an example unit vector i. And if I said that, well, unit vector i, uh, we also have to specify a magnitude, but the magnitude of unit vectors, by definition, are 1. And the direction uh, that we specify for unit vector i is along the 
horizontal or the x-axis, so we can just say that the direction of this unit vector is always to the right. And this right here is the definition of a unit vector i or the unit vector i. i just has a magnitude of 1 and it always acts in the x direction where other vectors that we found in the past, you know, they would have a magnitude, they could have a magnitude of 1 and they could have a angle of 0 degrees acting to the right, but most times they had some other magnitude and some other angle that they were acting in. Again, unit vectors, the only difference unit vectors have with other force vectors are they just have, by definition, they will always have a magnitude of 1 and they will always act along a specific axis. So for the sake of completion, we can say that unit vector j has a magnitude of 1 and it's acting in the vertical direction. And k has a magnitude of 1. And I'll just draw this little dot here to specify that it's acting in and out of the plane. So it's that third dimension, right, along the z-axis. Okay, so that's great and all. Now we understand what unit vectors are, right? We understand this. How does that actually help us? Well, let's go back to this example uh, right here. We said that f has a force component f of x, which acts in the x direction, and f of y, which acts in the y direction. But again, we don't really know the directions of f of x and f of y if I had not put this little x and y symbol here. So the reason unit vectors are so important is because they help us specify the direction of particular force components. And so here I could rewrite this force vector f as f of x. Well, f of x, what we could do is we could take the magnitude of f of x, which is just f of x, right? We don't draw the little arrow on top because now it's no longer a vector. But if we multiplied it by the unit vector that acts along the x-axis, which is i, all of a sudden, now we know the magnitude and the direction of this particular component of force vector f. Now, if we added f of y, which is this component right here, what I could say is we could take the magnitude of y, which is just f of y, times the unit vector j. So all we're doing here is we're taking the magnitude of a particular force component and we're multiplying it by the unit vector in a particular direction. So this f of x uh, magnitude, which is a scalar, multiplied by a vector, gives us this component right here. And the same thing for y. We can take the magnitude of y, multiply it by a unit vector, and that gives us f of y. Another way to think about it is f of x, in this case, is simply the magnitude of f of x times the unit vector i, and f of y is equal to the magnitude of f of y times the unit vector j. So now when we look at this particular component of f, we can see that this component, this force vector component, has a particular magnitude, and it also tells us the direction. It tells us that this force vector f of x is acting along the i or the x direction. And same thing for y. This force vector f of y has a particular magnitude, and it's acting along the y-axis.